Tac. Sorry, just one minute. Okay, I'm now sharing my screen. If you can see it, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you all see it? Okay, awesome. Um, all right, I think we're ready to go. All right, um, welcome to our presentation today. Uh, today, we're basically going to go over how to start your own e-commerce business. And I'll walk you from A to Z, what is the whole process like and what do you need to know? My name is Ahmed and I work at Astro Labs. Um, I'm the director of marketing and learning programs. Um, and I have a lot of experience with uh, e-commerce. I was actually um, one of the first people on the marketing team at um, nemshi.com. Um, so I actually have been working in e-commerce for the last uh, seven years or so. Um, and uh, basically um, I wanna teach you today what you need to know from A to Z if you're someone that wants to launch your own venture. And this is a sample of a week long program that we have coming up, which is more in depth. And this program is, um, it's a paid program, but it'll basically take you to launch your business and we'll basically handhold you all the way. We'll give you one-to-one -one support. Uh, we'll help you set up your online store. We'll help you also with the legal setup and uh, help you launch your um, website from a technical point of view. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, but like, this is basically just a sample of our larger program. And if you stay to the end, I'll give you a special um, discount um, for that program, if you wanna come to that program. Also, one more thing is um, I'm gonna share um, in the chat now, um, a link um, that if you want access to the slides today, I can share that with you. So just if you um, check in the chat now, I'll share a link. Um, and basically on that link, um, if you want the slides, um, then just enter your details there. And after the presentation is over, I'll send you all of um, you know, these slides here. So I'll just share that on the chat right now. Give me a sec. Yeah. So like that's the same link that we had on the meetup page, but some of you might not have filled in your details. So if you wanna have these slides, just fill in that link, please. Okay, let's get started. Um, so I wanna ask all of you first, um, let's say that you have an idea for an e-commerce business, right? what are the things that you have to think about? Like, what are the areas that I would need to think about if I am just starting it for the first time? It's a brand new company. It's a brand new e-commerce business. What are the things that I have to think about if I want to actually launch this business? And I'll just give all of you a second to think about this. Like, what are the things that I need? And if you um, have any answers, just put it in the chat. Or if you want, you can raise your hand and I'll um, unmute you. So just let me know. What are your thoughts, guys? Uh, um, go ahead and type it in the chat if you want. Like, what do you think you need to start an e-commerce business? Okay, logistics, payments. You have to have an idea, that's correct. You have to have a proof of concept, business model, product, website, payments, exactly. So I think most of you mentioned uh, most of what I had in mind. Um, exactly, yeah, business model. So um, there's basically five areas that you need to actually start an e-commerce business. And I think most of you mentioned most of them. So the first one is I have to have something to sell, right? I mean, <laughs> e-commerce basically means I'm selling something online, right? So the first step is I have to have something to sell, right? That's the easiest part, right? Is like, there has to be something that I'm selling. And there's actually 
a few different ways that I could sell something. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's not only physical products. So some people say, oh, like I don't know anything physical that I can sell. There's actually more things that you could actually sell that are not physical. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. I need a place to sell it, right? So I have to have some kind of portal, some kind of website of some sort to actually, uh, I mean, sell something, right? Uh, yeah, so Zach is asking, uh, will I share the presentation? Yes, if you fill in your details in the link here that I just shared again. Yeah, so I have to have a place to sell, some kind of website. Um, I also have to have legal setup in some cases. There are some cases where I don't actually need to set up legally, and I'll explain those cases in a bit. But um, it's possible actually in the UAE to sell things without having a trade license in some cases. So I'll explain what those cases are. Um, I also need to think about operations and delivery if I have a physical product, especially. And I also have to think about marketing and selling. So those are basically the five buckets or the five areas that I have to think about if I want to start my own e-commerce business. And like basically everything that all of you mentioned fall under one of those five buckets. Okay, so um, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's start with the first one, something to sell. So there are basically a few things that I could sell, right? So the first one that probably most of you already know about is a physical product, right? And that's usually what people think about when they think about e-commerce is I'm selling like a shirt or, or like maybe like a laptop or something physical that I have to ship um, to the consumer. And that's usually um, what most people think about, right? Is, you know, actually selling physical products. But there are other things that I could also sell through e-commerce. Another example is I could sell virtual products. Um, can anybody guess what a virtual product is or give an example of a virtual product? Like what does a virtual product mean? Can anyone guess? Services? Not really services, no. It's a little bit different. Yeah, software could be one, online course, web development, coupons. Yeah, so I'll talk about that more, but it's, yeah, it's basically something that I can sell online that I can basically deliver to them online. So it could be a course, it could be a book, it could be a software, anything that's uh, under one of those categories. So that, yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, this class, yeah, exactly. So anything that's um, not a physical thing, right? And the last one, is I could also sell services. Okay, can anyone tell me what is the difference between a virtual product and a service? Like, how are these two things different? Like, what is a service? Any guesses? Post, logistics. Yeah, so basically think about, yeah, yeah, someone got it, um, consultation. So services basically means that I'm selling my time, right? So services are anything that I'm selling my time for, right? So um, if I am uh, like a consultant or I'm selling uh, like my own time for any reason, then um, that um, would be classified as a service. But a virtual product is something that I'm selling in a virtual way like a course or like a book or like some kind of software where I don't have to sacrifice my time. I'm just selling it um, as a one-time thing. And I'll explain more of these.
Okay, one second. Okay, just give me one second, everyone. Um, let me try to reconnect. Okay, can you all hear me now? Yeah, am I back? Okay, sorry guys, I don't know what's happening, uh, but it looks like I'm back, so uh, let's carry on. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. So let's continue. So as I mentioned, there's basically uh, two main types of physical products. There's a product that you stock your own inventory for, and there's um, something known as drop shipping. Um, has anyone heard this term before drop shipping? Okay, who can tell me what drop shipping is? Anyone want to volunteer to come on the mic and tell me? Okay, how about you, Rahil? Um, do you want to come on? Can you uh, hear me, Rahil? Yes. Yeah, go for it. So like, what is drop shipping? Drop shipping is like that uh, if uh, there is uh, already a store like uh, AliExpress or something like that. So you can uh, have an account there on AliExpress and you can sell your stuff uh, from AliExpress on your website. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and uh, that's a really good explanation. Thanks for here. Yeah, so basically drop shipping is where you use a third party to actually take care of the deliveries. So all you have to do is have your own storefront and then you, um, all you have to do is just market that storefront. And then uh, all of the, uh, I mean, all of like the shipping and the, and the um, delivery and all of that takes place from the drop shipper. So um, one example is if you use, as you mentioned, Alibaba Express, like that's one case where I can have my own store. And then when a customer places an order, it'll basically uh, order it from some place in China that will then ship it directly to the customer. So I don't have to actually stock the inventory. I can, like all I have to worry about is just, um, I mean, basically only selling, right? So I just have to have my own website and actually sell the product. Then um, once someone buys it, it's off of my plate basically. So someone else will take care of, you know, delivering it. So in the course, we'll also talk about, um, um, if you don't have an idea for a product, we'll show you ways to actually do market research to actually come up with a product that would sell well. We also talk about things like how to think about like product margins, which is how much are you buying the product for and how much are you selling it for and how to come up with a business plan. Because I mean, uh, e-commerce, one of the tricky things about it is you have to make sure that your margins are correct, right? Or, or I mean, they're like profitable, right? I mean, because there's so many things that you have to pay for. It, um, if it's a physical product, then you have to pay for shipping. Um, you also have to pay for marketing. You have to pay for so many things. And if you don't have a high profitability rate and a good margin, then it won't be profitable for you. So like that's one of the key things is thinking about what is a product that can sell well that also has a good margin. Okay, so that's what a, um, a physical product is. Um, now, a virtual product could be something like a course. Um, it could be a book that you're selling. It could be software, so like a, um, like a SaaS, you know, software as a service. Or it could be um, something like um, selling leads. So like this is actually very common as a online virtual product. It's sort of a service, but in a way it's more like a product where 
someone comes to you and um, like they fill up some kind of a form or like some kind of a lead form, then you send that or you sell that to someone else or some other company um, that would take advantage of those leads. So in a way, like this is also one of the ways that you could think about selling a virtual product is to have a place where people find out about services or like some kind of products, then you sell that to other companies. So one example of this is um, um, Astrolabs, right? So we have a co-working space, right? Um, there are dozens of companies that basically sell leads to co-working spaces. So they basically have a website that basically has a list of a bunch of different co-working spaces. Then if someone goes there, they can fill up a lead form there. Then they basically sell those leads back to us. So like that's, um, I mean, like another business model that's sort of a virtual product where you sell leads to other businesses. Okay, um, so I mean, like those are all examples of virtual products. Now services, these are things where you're basically selling time right so you, um you're selling um your time as someone that has some kind of a service that you can offer to people um examples of this could be um consulting services it could be coaching services it could be technical work so it could be someone hires you to you know um, build a graphic for them or like maybe build an app right it could be coaching like someone wants to lose weight you help them lose weight or someone, um, you know, wants consulting for their business and um, you can help them, you know, like, like, yeah, I mean, basically um, do that. So um, services basically are any time where you're selling um, your time for money. But in a way, I could turn this into an e-commerce product and basically make it into what's called a productized service. Um, has anyone heard this term before, productized service? Yeah. Yeah. So a productized service basically means that I'm selling a service, right? But I'm selling it as a product. So what that means is let's say I have a business where I'm teaching people how to lose weight, right? Um, I mean, that's a service, right? But, um, because I'm selling my time to those people. But what I can do is on my website, I'll have what looks like a product that they can pay for. And it'll be like an hourly rate. So I'll say, I mean, if you pay me um, 1,000 dirhams, then I will um, basically give you three sessions. Or like something kind of like that, where it's a service that you're offering you know, to the people, but um, how you sell it is more like a product. So like that's why it's called a productized service, because it'll still be listed in like an e-commerce portal, but it's a service that you're offering them and not really a product. Okay, so that's basically what you're selling, right? And like, that's the first thing that you have to think about is what kind of thing are you selling? Is it a physical product? Is it a virtual product or is it some kind of a service? Now, after that, I have to think about where am I gonna sell this thing, right? So there are a few different options. I could sell it on my own website and Nowadays, that's very cheap. It's the cheapest option. And you don't even have to be a developer if you want to build your own site. There are thousands of themes and thousands of different things to um, choose from that I'll talk about uh, in a minute. But it's uh, super easy and it's not that expensive to actually build your own website. That's completely on your own. I could also use um, uh, what's called a locked hosting provider. So one example of this, uh, is uh, using a service like Shopify. So Shopify is an example of a service where they'll basically help me build my own website, but I'm basically locked to only using their platform. So it's a little different than having your own fully owned website because if it's your own fully owned website, then um, you have full control over all of the code. But if you use some kind of a locked hosting provider like Shopify, then um, I basically have to do everything through them. So I'm a bit more limited. But in terms of the e-commerce, there's actually not that much of a difference. And they're basically almost like the same price. Okay, uh, next is um, 
I could also use a third party. So a third party basically is um, a service that basically takes care of everything for me. So it's not my own website or my own branding of my own company, but instead it's a third party that basically um, I sell on their platform. Um, an example of this is uh, Amazon FBA. It, um, it stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. Um, it's a service where basically I can sell on Amazon and um, I just have to send them my products and they ship it and they take care of payments and, and um, they pay me. So I don't have to actually have my own website. I can sell it through Amazon. And actually in the UAE, it's actually allowed to sell on Amazon if you don't have a trade license. So Amazon FBA actually lets you sell on their platform as an individual in the UAE. So you don't have to actually physically have a business or a trade license. Um, there are other companies like Noon that can also sell on your behalf, um, but Noon doesn't like have to have a trade license. So, I mean, so like certain um, um, platforms, like they have different rules. So some of them let you sell even if you don't have a business set up legally. And other of them like Amazon, they do let you sell even if you don't have a legal business set up. Um, you could also sell on other marketplaces that are more niche. Um, so like examples of this are, let's say that I'm selling something like a t-shirt, right? There are hundreds of different websites that can help you sell only t-shirts. So like Teespring and I mean, like there's hundreds of them. Um, and basically they don't need you to actually have a storefront. I can basically just list my own t-shirt on their website and I can sell it there. So it depends on what you're trying to sell, but there are actually a lot of different websites that can actually sell for you, even if you don't have a business set up or you don't have a trade license. And it mainly depends on what is the product that you're trying to sell. Um, so if you decide what you're selling, then there are um, a lot of ways to sell that on third party websites that don't actually need you to have a business set up. So yeah, so I mean, one of the problems though is it, um, if you choose to go down the first route of having your own website, a very common mistake people make is they basically think that I have to go and hire my own developer. I have to pay like maybe 30 or like 50,000 dirhams to actually build a website. And, and they think about all of these things that they have to do, but actually it's not that hard, right? So usually people think about it, I mean, like one way of thinking about it is imagine that you're building a house, right? So I could build it in a hard way where I basically build, I mean, everything from scratch, right? I basically hire someone, they come and they lay the foundation and they build it all from scratch. Um, like that's a way that I could do it, but it would be a lot more expensive and it would cost me a lot more money. But the easier way of doing this is I use some kind of a template. Um, it's also known as a CMS or a content management system. And it basically has most of the structure already in place. So all I have to do is basically just customize it. And it's a lot more like building a house that already has a structure. And all you have to do is only customize that slightly um, just so it fits whatever business you're selling. And if it's an e-commerce business, then it usually has the same kind of a flow, right? So um, you usually have um, like maybe like a home page, um, then you have a category page, then you have a product page, then you have a checkout where, um, where people can buy something from you. But it's usually fairly simple, right? It's not usually something that um, you have to develop from scratch. So like that's why it's a lot easier if you use some kind of a platform. So like let me give you two examples of this. So the first example is if I want to build what's called a fully owned website or like a website that I have full control over, how I can do this is basically number one is I just have to buy a domain, which is basically just my website address, right? So like, let's say I buy, um, I don't know, myshop.com, right? So I have to buy some domain or some address for my website, right? Like that's the first step. And usually domains only cost maybe $15 per year. 
which is maybe like 50 dirhams per year. So it's pretty cheap, actually. Um, so the first step is I have to buy a domain, which is basically just an address of my website. Uh, next, I have to buy what's called uh, hosting. So hosting is basically where your files live or where the website is going um, to be hosted. So like this is different from a domain. So a domain is just an address, um, like www.something.com. And hosting is actually where the files live. So hosting is something that I have to buy if I want to have a website. So I have to buy a domain, I have to buy hosting. And then I have to use some kind of a service um, that's a CMS or a content management system. So um, the most famous one that's free that anyone can use, that's an open source software, um, it's known as WooCommerce. So WooCommerce is actually built on WordPress and it's free to use. And that allows you to basically make your own store for free. I don't have to pay for uh, anything. Um, so if I, I mean, if I buy a domain, I buy hosting and I set up, um, you know, WooCommerce, um, it's very easy, right? Then I just have to buy some kind of a theme or, I mean, there's even free themes, but if I want to have a really good quality one, um, then I should probably buy a theme and like, um, yeah, I mean, very high quality themes might only cost like $50. They're not that expensive. And if I have a theme, then all I have to do is install it. Then after that, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I could basically have my own e-commerce site live for around $100 total cost in terms of buying a domain, buying hosting, and buying a very high quality team. All of that could be done with just $100 and maybe like a few hours of work. It's not that hard. And in our bootcamp, we're actually gonna talk to you about how to build your own site from scratch and how to actually do this if you wanna go down this route. Um, there's a few questions. Uh, what about Magento? Which one is better? So Magento, I don't recommend it if you're not a developer or you don't have a developer because it's harder to customize. So uh, WooCommerce is much easier if you're doing your own project because it's built on WordPress and it's a lot easier to customize and it's free. Magento is good, but it usually needs someone with a little more technical knowledge so you might have to pay more for someone to build it on Magento as opposed to WooCommerce. Uh, another question is hosting is actually high in terms of price. Well, it does depend, Paula. Like um, you could find good hosting for around $15 a month. Um, so an example of this is there's a website called SiteGrounds. Like that's one example that has very high quality hosting for WordPress. And they start from like 15 to, to maybe $30 a month. And it's not that expensive and it's very, I mean, it's very fast. Um, okay, there's a question. What if a person is not technically equipped to starting up? So again, all of this can be done if you're not a technical person. So if you come to our bootcamp, we'll show you how to do this even if you're not a developer. But if you're even scared of this, then there's even a way, yeah, I mean, we can also help each other as well, that's true. Um, so. Okay, Paula is asking AWS. So I wouldn't use AWS, honestly. So AWS is um, Amazon Web Servers. Uh, so Paula asked a question like uh, AWS is a bit expensive. Um, that's because AWS is mainly used for, um, I guess, other kinds of websites where you have to customize it fully. So if you're building an app like Uber or like uh, Airbnb or like something like that that needs more customization, then I might have to use, um, you know, uh, I, mean, I mean, I mean, like some other service, like Amazon Web Services. But in case of a simple e-commerce site, it's kind of overkill. Like it's not needed, and it's a lot more expensive if you use something like that. Um, I would probably use something. I mean, let me type it here. Like, there's a web. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a website called SiteGrounds. Um, that's a really good one, um, SiteGrounds.com. Um, that's a really good one if you um, want to get started, and they have really nice packages for WordPress, and it's not that expensive. Um, okay, there's another question. Uh, which is it better to build a Marketplace website? So Marketplace, uh, you could actually build it uh, using WordPress, but actually I would probably use something called Bubble. 
So a bubble is actually really good if you want to build something that's a little more advanced. Um, it's one of these no code tools that let you build uh, whatever comes to your mind. Um, and yeah, it's a lot easier uh, to do it using bubble. Uh, there's a comment, what about open cart? So open cart is also good, but it's a little harder if you're not a technical person. So open cart is a bit like Magento in that you have to have someone that has a little bit of technical knowledge if you want to get started with it. So usually if you use something like open cart, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but it usually needs someone um, that has some technical knowledge. So if you're not a developer and you want to use one of those services, you might have to hire someone. But if you use WordPress, it's really easy, even if you're not a developer. Okay, Paula is saying, um, is Bubble a good integration with third party? Yes, it has really good integrations. It connects to almost every API. It's a really good platform if you want to um, you know, build a marketplace. I recommend Bubble. Okay, um, so I mean, going back to this, yeah, so like Rahil is asking, what about setup cost, uh, trade license? So I'm gonna come to all of that. So the trade license and all that, I'm gonna come to it later on in this presentation. Like now I'm only talking about how to set up a website, right? Everything else I'll come to it later on. Okay. Um, so yeah, so if this is even too complicated for you, I could use what's called a locked hosting provider and they basically do everything for you out of the box. So I, I don't even have to be a developer, right? I don't even have to do anything complicated. I, um, all I have to do is basically just buy a domain which is just my website address. Then I have to use one of these locked hosting providers. And the most famous one is Shopify. So Shopify is one of these e-commerce platforms that basically have everything built in. Um, and I don't have to be a developer. I just have to pay for their subscription. And they basically build your whole site for you. And they actually have an offer now because of the um, virus. Like they have a special offer where I think they're giving out um, at least one month free of their service. So if you wanna get started, you could use Shopify. And uh, it's not that expensive. It's, I mean, it's a little more than doing it on your own through WordPress. It's around maybe $30 a month as a starting price, um, which is fairly cheap, right? It's basically all of your hosting basically for only $30 um, a month. And it doesn't even need any development work. And they actually have built in themes. So I don't even have to buy a theme. Yeah, uh, they also take a percentage of the sale, but that's more like a credit card transaction. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's also one of the drawbacks is they do take a small percentage of every sale. And that's, I mean, that's actually why um, a lot of people prefer to use WordPress because it's a platform that you fully own and there's no other fees that you have to pay except for the hosting fees and the credit card processing fees, but that's it, right? So yeah, I mean, it's kind of a trade-off, right? If you're someone that is not very technical or like you don't have time for it, then Shopify is probably a better option if you're willing to pay slightly more. If you have more time and um, you wanna save money, um, but you're willing to learn how to do it on your own, then I would recommend WordPress, honestly. So it depends on basically what is your own personal trade-off. Okay. Yeah, and third party, um, now let's talk about those. So third party services are places where I don't have to actually build my own website. I can use what's called a managed storefront. So that's basically what that means is I don't have to have my own branding, my own domain. I can just use their service. So I already mentioned this. So Amazon FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon. Um, they allow you to basically set up your own um, store on Amazon. Um, they take a larger percentage of the sales, of course, um, but they also help you in terms of marketing it, in terms of shipping it, um, and uh, yeah, in terms of all of that, right? Um, and you could set up even as someone that um, doesn't have a trade license. So it actually has options for you if you don't have a trade license business. Um, you could also use Noon, but Noon does need a trade license. So you do have to set up a legal company if you want to use something like Noon. Um, you could uh, also use certain niche stores. So like one example is if you're selling products that's uh, focused on women or for families, uh, there's a startup that actually is based out of Astrolabs. It's called, it's her store. And what they do basically is um, they basically sell your products for you. 
um, on their own store, even if you don't have a trade license. So it's basically for uh, anyone that you know wants to make a little more money and they're in that niche, then they could use one of those services. Um, okay, so there's a few more questions here. Let me just answer them. Can I use both dropshipping and physical products by myself? Yes, so if you have your own website, so any of the two cases that I mentioned earlier, either on WordPress or Shopify, they allow you to sell both kinds of products. So I could have maybe half of my products are physical products that I own, and the other half could be drop shipping products. So that's also a possibility, right? Uh, is Amazon FBA set up for a UAE? Yes. Um, so Amazon FBA actually launched in the UAE, I think maybe one or two months ago. Um, they actually have a website where you can, I mean, if you just search for seller on amazon.ae, you'll find it. Um, and yeah, like uh, it's open for anyone. Um, are there any legal implications if someone sells via Amazon? Um, you know, what do you mean by legal implications? Um, you mean, uh, I'm not sure what the question means. Um, can you clarify, Naveed? Anyway, while Naveed is typing, um, yeah, I mean, there's other ways that I could also sell as well. So I could use um, on-demand services like Teespring if I'm selling t-shirts. I could sell on uh, Etsy if I'm selling things like maybe mugs or if I'm selling, you know, any other physical product that has some kind of design on it. Um, I could sell, if I'm selling a course, I could sell on Udemy, right? I could sell on Upwork if I'm selling my services. So, I mean, it, it like really depends on um, what kind of product are you offering? But in general, if you want to build out your own brand, then you have to have your own website if you want to build out your own brand in a smart way. Um, and usually what people do is um, like they might do a combination of both of these. So they might have their own website, but they also use some of these third party tools to basically get more sales as a marketing technique, right? So, I mean, that's also very common is I could still have my own store that I have either on WordPress or on Shopify, and I could also sell on Amazon. So I could do both. Um, yeah, so the question is, can you link your personal bank account to Amazon's seller account if you don't have a trade license? Yes. As far as I know, they actually opened it up. Uh, there's a form if you go to amazon.ae and you like scroll to the bottom, it'll say sell on Amazon. It allows you actually to uh, sell uh, even if you don't have a company bank account. Yeah, so Navita is saying uh, no one is allowed to conduct any business activity without a UAE trade license in case of Amazon. Um, yeah, yeah, so again, like this is where, I mean, like you have to realize like what is the actual law? So in the UAE and in most countries, if you want to sell, um, uh, I mean, like, let's just take like the UAE as a example, right? If I want to sell in the UAE on my own, I do need to have a trade license if I'm selling on my own. But if I'm selling through Amazon, I, like then I'm using their trade license. So they're basically just using me as someone that's helping them. But the customer in terms of how they pay, they pay Amazon directly. So, I mean, like this law that you have to have your own company set up, it mainly has to do with um, who the customer is buying from. So if the customer is buying from me directly, then there might be some legal gray area, right? But if the customer is buying from Amazon and I'm selling through Amazon as a person, that's completely um, legal. There's like nothing that's against that. Yeah, it's like selling on Dubizzle. Yeah, it's a similar thing, yeah. But the only difference is I have a actual store, right? But it is legal, definitely. Uh, is there a safe platform where customers could pay me online? For example, I send them a link that they can transfer? Yes. So um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but I could use something like PayPal. And there's an, um, another service called Gumroad. If you go to gumroad.com, that also lets you do that where I can basically send someone that link and they can pay by credit card. Then it'll transfer it to me, even if I don't have a business set up. Uh, okay, 
Um, let's continue. Um, yeah, another option is I could sell to a distributor, like maybe Nemshi or Spree or one of these other e-commerce companies. And like they just sell it on their own. So it's a little different than Amazon FBA because like in the last case, I'm selling to a buyer. So, so someone would buy it from me and then they would sell it on their own, right? So, I mean, like the last one is mainly um, if you have a large quantity of some product, I could approach these various companies like Nemshi or one of these other companies and um, they could sell it on my behalf. Yeah, if I have a person, yeah, there's a question from Iris. If I have a, per um, a professional service license, can I sell webinars and online courses on Udemy without a separate trade license and KHDA approval? Yes, you can. Uh, because you're selling it through a US company, right? You're not selling it in the UAE. Um, as long as you don't have them meet up in person. So I think that KHDA, it only um, is required if you have a physical event that you have, because they actually need to see um, where your training will be conducted. Um, so if you have a physical training, then of course you have to have a trade license, but if it's selling a course through a third party like um, Udemy or Skillshare or one of those, then it's not needed. I can just, you know, as a person upload it on my own and it's completely fine and it's legal. Okay. So the question is um, like, why do I need, I mean, like, why do I need a trade license, right? Like what are the cases where I would have to have a trade license? Can anybody guess? Like type it in the chat. Like what are the cases where I would have to have a trade license? For taxes, yeah. Import, export. Yeah, that's true. If I need a corporate account, consumer rights, Exactly. Yeah. I mean, usually, yeah, I mean, all of those are, um, you know, good reasons. Um, like the reason that someone that has a e-commerce business would have to have a trade license is uh, mainly to accept credit card payments on your own website. So if I have my own website, either on Shopify or on WordPress, and I want to take credit card payments, I need to have a trade license because if I want to set up a credit card payment gateway, I have to have a trade license. So, so that's one of the things that I need to do if I'm setting up my own credit card payments on my own website. If I'm using a third party like Amazon, I don't need it, right? Because they are the ones that are taking care of payments for me. Also, if I wanna send company invoices, so certain, um, I guess companies, if, like, if they wanna use your services, they'll need you to send them an invoice. And I can't send an official company invoice with VAT and all of that if I don't have um, that set up. Um, you also need to sign agreements um, in some cases. So like, let's say that I'm uh, shipping something to customers. I would need to use some kind of logistics company like Aramex maybe. And in that case, I would have to like basically have my own, um, I mean, trade license if I wanna actually ship something legally. Also, if you want to sponsor employees, so if you want to have your own visa on the company, you of course have to have a trade license. Um, yeah. Okay, there's a question. Does the UAE have startup friendly payment gateways? So there are, I'm going to discuss a few options, but it depends on the type of business. So if you have a trade license, it's very easy, right? So I, um, you could use checkout, you could use pay for it. All of those are very easy. If you don't have a trade license or like you want to set up other businesses, I'll talk about that more in a minute. Okay, so um, with a license, so if you wanna go down this route, um, you could get a UAE license and there's a lot of different options for that. Astrolabs actually um, um, lets you have a license, uh, which is in the Dubai free zone, uh, JLT. And it's actually um, one of the best ways to actually set up a bank account because certain other places like if you set up your company in um, one of the free zones that are outside of Dubai, like let's say Ras al Khaimah or Fujairah, it's gonna be cheaper, right? But you might struggle with opening a company bank account um, because a lot of banks, they don't actually um, open up bank accounts for uh, like a lot of these other free zones. And they also have certain capital requirements. So like, I mean, one example is, um, 
I mean, certain banks, if you open up a, I mean, like a, um, like through like maybe Ras al Khema, they'll like need to have at least maybe 50,000 dirhams in cash in the bank if you want to get started even. So, I mean, there's certain restrictions, but Astrolabs actually makes it a lot easier because we are whitelisted with a lot of banks in Dubai. So it makes it much easier um, to do it. So uh, Iris is saying, I struggle to open a bank account with DMCC license. Um, are you set up through Astrolabs or through um, some other free zone? So, um, yeah, so I can follow up, um, uh, up with you separately on this. Um, if you wanna send me an email later on, I can give you some of our tips. Um, yeah, like I'll discuss it uh, later on. Yeah, so um, like the UAE is, yeah, I mean, that's like one option. I could also open a US or a UK offshore license. So this is actually a lot cheaper than opening in the UAE, but it has some restrictions that I'll talk about. So there are certain things that, um, that I have to know about. Um, but yeah, it is possible to open up a US or a UK offshore license. Um, and I could operate even without a license. So there are certain cases where I, I don't even need a license, right? So I could use something like PayPal. I could use Gumroad. I could use third party websites that I mentioned like Amazon, FBA, and a few others. And it's super easy, right? And I'll talk about some, I mean, practical case studies of how to actually do that uh, in a bit. Uh, there's a question here. Um, do, um, do we need a trade license for consulting services? Um, it depends, right? So in some cases, yes. If you're meeting them in person, yes. But if you're doing it virtually, then no, it's not needed. And I'll talk about some options in a minute. Uh, okay, Rahil is asking, if I have a Astrolabs co-working license, can I open up an e-commerce store? Yes, you can. However, um, you have to partner with some logistics company for the, um, for the you know, delivery last mile. So um, if you open up in any free zone uh, in the UAE, um, you can't make deliveries on your own. If you want to make you know, deliveries on your own, then you have to set up um, with a mainland license or you have to work with some kind of company that can ship it for you, like FedEx or Aramex or UPS, right? And like, that's what most people do is, I mean, like they don't want to deal with, you know, actually shipping it on their own. So they open up a free zone trade license. Then they partner with one of these companies like Aramex and they do the shipping for them. Okay. Um, so at Astrolabs, I mean, we offer this where, I mean, we give you Dubai company registration, um, subsidized trade licenses, and we have a fast track bank set up in Dubai which is actually really hard to do on your own or even through other free zones. And we also have a 24 seven co-working space, um, which would be more, I mean, I guess like more relevant, I mean, like once this whole like quarantine thing is over, but yeah, I mean, if uh, any of you are free, you're you know, more than welcome to come by and visit. Uh, if you wanna learn more about this, uh, there's a link here, so you can check this out later on. Or like just go to our own website and I mean, you'll find all of those links there. Um, there's a question, uh, do I need a license for a SaaS? Uh, it depends on how you're taking payments. So I'll talk about that more later, but uh, if you wanna take credit card payments, then yes, you have to have some kind of a trade license. So either a uh, UAE license or a US or a UK license. If you only wanna take PayPal, then you don't need a license. But if you wanna take credit cards, then you have to have a license. Okay, so there's a few cases for people that are in the UAE or outside of the US if they wanna open up a US account. So uh, one example is called Stripe Atlas. It's a service that Stripe offers where um, you basically only pay $500 as a one-time fee. And they basically set you up with a US LLC company in Delaware. And they um, also set you up with a US corporate bank account. And they also let you have Stripe as your payment gateway. So it's called Stripe Atlas. And we're the only partner of Stripe uh, in the UAE. So if you wanna use this service, let me know and I can give you more information. But it only costs $500 as a one-time payment. 
So that's one option. Another option is you could set up a UK business. So uh, there's a service called Launchies that's also based in the Middle East. And they allow you to open a limited company formation in the UK. There are some restrictions here though, like it's harder to open up a bank account in this case. Like you actually have to have someone in the UK help you with that. But it's an option that you might want to explore. I don't know that much about, you know, like this one um, because I never personally tried it, but it is an option if you want to open up a UK bank account and a UK company. Um, but I recommend personally to use Stripe Atlas because it's more widely known and uh, it's a lot easier to set up. Okay. Um, so what about if you don't um, have a trade license or like you don't want a trade license? So there's a few options where you could take payments, right? I could take payments from PayPal. So PayPal doesn't need you to have a trade license. I could just um, set up a PayPal and, you know, send someone a PayPal link. And if it's virtual, then it's fine. Like you don't actually need to have a trade license. Um, um, you could also sell on payment processors like Gumroad. So Gumroad is one example where I can basically set up a store on Gumroad and I can send someone a link to that store and they pay by credit card. Then they send it to my PayPal uh, account. So in a way, it lets you take credit card payments if you don't have a trade license. So like this is one way of doing it. If you don't have a trade license, then that's one way of doing it. Okay, uh, PayPal doesn't allow to transfer amount to bank account without a trade license. Yeah, so like that's one of the limitations of PayPal in the UAE is it's not easy to actually transfer it to your bank account, but um, like what people can do is um, um, you can actually link it to a credit card or to a debit card and then it'll transfer it onto that card. So that's actually kind of like a hack that you can do is if you set it up with your debit card, then if you transfer money onto that debit card, it's the same as transferring it to your bank account. Okay. Or I could sell on other platforms. So I could sell on uh, Amazon FBA. I could sell on niche websites or I could sell courses, right? Like these are all cases where I don't actually have to have a trade license, right? Okay, so operations and logistics. Uh, this is where I have to think about actually shipping it to the customer. And like this is mainly relevant if, if you have a physical product. If it's a virtual product or it's a service is less relevant. Um, if you have your own inventory, then um, you would need to have a trade license if you want to partner with some kind of shipping company like uh, Aramex or UPS. I would have to have a trade license. Um, yeah, and if you want to, um, I mean, like basically ship it on your own, then you have to have a, man, a, um, a mainland license, right? So if you want to be the person that actually does the you know, delivery on your own, then you have to have a mainland license. But I mean, usually if you're just starting off, that's not something that, I mean, like you wanna worry about, right? Like, you know, hiring drivers and all of that. So usually if someone is just starting off, they set up with a free zone trade license, then they partner with some other shipping company that can deliver it for them. Yeah, or you could use a third party service like Amazon FBA and they'll take care of all of the deliveries for you. I mean, of course, there's a fee that they charge per order, but it takes that part out of it where you, you don't have to actually worry about, you know, actually fulfilling that order. Okay, in terms of marketing, um, there are lots of ways that you could market your product. And this is actually, um, I mean, it's one of our specialities that we offer at Astro Labs. We have a um, full week digital marketing course that goes into detail on how to do this. But I mean, just to keep it short, I could sell it through display ads. So things like Facebook ads, um, Google display network ads, um, ads on Instagram. I mean, all of those ads that are either videos or uh, images. Um, I could sell it on Google search ads. So if someone is searching for a product, I could sell it there. I could also um, use a service called Google shopping that allows you to list products on Google. Um, I could sell it through content or organic SEO. 
So I could basically try to rank for certain words and like basically try to build out my brand from a content marketing point of view. I could sell through email marketing. So like basically just start collecting emails and having my own list. Yeah. And like, those are like the main ways that I could sell or others uh, in terms of affiliates or influencer marketing or other partnerships. And again, I mean, all of these, I mean, I could talk about them for hours, but uh, it's a short um, webinar. So I'm not going to go into that much detail. If you want more information, just let me know. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the rest of, um, of this session, and we're almost done, but there's um, just a few more things that I want to go over, is I want you, um, all of you to think about this from a practical point of view. So imagine an actual business that one of you wants to start, and how would you actually go about applying everything that I just went over? So I'm going to go over basically four case studies, and I'm going to show you how each of these people can use what I just mentioned in terms of setting up their business. And I'll also tell you how much it's going to cost them. So each person, I'm going to give you the actual numbers that I think it's going to cost them in terms of the setup cost for each of the businesses that I recommend. So let's start with the first one. So like, let me go over this case study. So Sarah is someone that has an eye for fashion and she knows a wholesaler that can supply her with vintage purchase, uh, uh, um, with vintage purses that she wants to sell online. So like this is a case where someone wants to sell a physical product and they are owning the inventory um, part of it. So it's not a drop shipping business. It's someone that is basically um, coming up with their own product that they wanna sell. So in this case, what do you think would be the place that's, um, that she sells it? What would be the legal setup? What would be the delivery? And how would she market it? So uh, again, like think about this case study. Someone wants to sell a physical product that they have themselves. So they're getting it from some kind of factory somewhere. How would they actually think about uh, where to sell it? What is the legal setup? How to ship it and how to market it? What do you think? Yes. So, I mean, let's start with the place to sell. So a place to sell, um, do you think she should sell it on her own website or use something like Amazon FBA? Like, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, she could use either one, but probably if she wants to build out her own brand, I would probably recommend to have her own website, right? Because she has full control over it. Okay, what about in terms of legal setup? Would she have to uh, register legally? What do you think? Yes, she would need it because if she's listing it on her own website, she would need a trade license to, to take credit card payments um, mainly and to work with different companies that, um, that are shipping it. So yes, yeah, she would need a trade license. Um, operations and delivery, she could partner with someone like um, Aramex or one of those. And uh, in terms of marketing, she would just use like the channels that I mentioned. So like, let me go through this um, practically how I would recommend setting this up. So probably um, she would have to um, have her own website using something like SiteGrounds to have a WordPress website um, and setting up uh, WooCommerce. Um, she could do her company set up through Astrolabs and pay monthly. And she could do her delivery through Aramex. Um, and then for her ads, She'll just have to run some ads and maybe do some influencer marketing or affiliate marketing. So in this case, she can basically get started only paying 5,000 dirhams, right? So she just has to pay for the domain, pay for hosting, pay for to get started with her monthly fee for the trade license, which is only 3,500 to get started, and then maybe pay some money on marketing. So it's very easy to just start and have your fully owned business live and ready for only around 5,000 dirhams. So that's one option that she could use, right? If she wants to be more conservative, then she might wanna use something like Amazon FBA or sell through other, um, yeah, I mean, I mean like some other third party website. But in the long term, it's always better to have your own domain and your own website because that will build your own brand and it'll basically get you more customers in the long run. Okay, let's go over a different case study. 
Um, so Marwa is someone that's a graphic designer with a few thousand followers on social media. And she wants to uh, sell her graphic designs, um, but she wants to do it more like a side project, right? So she, um, she already has a full-time job. She's thinking more just how can I make some more money on the side by selling this thing? So let's go back to this. So out of these, which one? Yeah. So like, what is she selling? Um, what kind of product? If she's a graphic designer, is it a physical product, virtual product or a service? What do you think? People are saying service. It's actually a product. It's a, um, because yeah, it's a virtual product because she's not selling her time. If she was selling her time, then it's a service, but she's selling a product, right? So, I mean, it's basically some designs that she'll have that she'll sell them online, right? So if someone is in a company, they'll download like this bundle and they'll be able to use it in their marketing. So it's a virtual product. Okay. Um, does she need to have a trade license? What do you think? Yes or no? Probably not, right? I mean, she could if she wants, right? But if it's just a side product uh, and she's not sure if she'll actually do it full time, she probably doesn't want to risk it. So she'll probably do it as a side business and she'll use some service. So how I would recommend to actually do this is I would probably use Gumroad for this because it lets you sell virtual products. She doesn't need to have any shipping or delivery. She doesn't need a trade license. And she can sell it through her, her own network. And that's actually what I did myself. So I actually um, um, wrote a book. It's called um, Timeless Digital Marketing. So if you go to Amazon or you Google it, like just uh, like Google Timeless Digital Marketing, it's a book that I wrote myself and I sold it through Gumroad. Um, and I didn't have to have a trade license, right? I just sold it as a virtual product. And, it, and I mean, like it needs... I mean, literally zero cost because I don't have to pay for anything. I just have to use these services. Um, the only downside is that, I mean, Gumroad takes a certain percentage, but it's not very large. It's maybe like five, 10% of the sale. But in terms of not having to have a trade license, it's a big saving if you aren't someone that, uh, yeah, I mean, wants to pay for a trade license, right? Okay. So let's take a third case. Let's say that Mohammed uh, found a cool product that he wants to market online and sell through drop shipping, right? So he found this really nice product. It's on uh, Alibaba and he thinks that it'll sell well in the UAE. So how would he think about selling this product? Or like, what are the things that he has to think about? So this is a drop shipping business, right? So it's a physical product that's a drop shipping business. Um, where would he sell it? Would he sell it on his own website or through Amazon? What do you think? Yeah, so Amazon FBA doesn't actually work for drop shipping. So drop shipping is not allowed on Amazon FBA. So if you want to, so if you want to use drop shipping, you have to have your own website. Yeah, so he would have to have his own website through either WooCommerce or Shopify. So basically, it would look like this. Um, he would have to, um, you know, do drop shipping, right? He would have to use his own website like Shopify and, and Shopify actually links to Alibaba in a, like in a very seamless way. So if someone places an order on Shopify, it'll automatically order it for the customer. Um, and he doesn't have to do any more steps. Um, there is one downside of doing drop shipping. Can it, anyone think of it? Like there's a very large downside of doing drop shipping in terms of delivery. Can uh, anyone think of what the downside is? It's mainly time, right? So usually drop shipping websites, they take between two to three weeks to actually give the customer that product. If you sold it locally, then you could have it to the customer like within maybe one to three days if you use any local service. But if you use drop shipping, it'll take between two to three weeks. So in, in some cases, customers might not want to order from you if a similar product is available in their country, right? Because then like they'll just buy that product instead, you know, and it'll get to them faster. Okay, in terms of license, does he need a license? 
Yes, he does, right? He has to have some kind of a license um, because he's charging people on his own platform. So he has to either set up through, um, I mean, through the UAE, so he could come to Astrolabs, but if he doesn't want to do that and he just wants to keep it virtual, he could set up through Stripe Atlas and it only costs around $500, right? Which is less than 2,000 dirhams. So all of this setup would be less than 2,500 dirhams with some marketing cost just to get started. So it's a very cheap option if you want to explore the um, drop shipping route. Okay, let's take one more case study. Let's say that Fatima is a trained nurse and psychologist who wants to start a remote consulting business for new moms to cope with postpartum depression. So this kind of a business, is it a product, a virtual product or a service? It's a service, right? It's something that, um, yeah, it's a service because she's selling her time. Like, just keep that in mind. If you're selling your time, then it's a service or a productized service, right? If you're selling something that's not your time, it doesn't depend on your, on your time, then it's a product. Okay, so she's selling a service. Okay, does she need to have a trade license? Kind of a tricky question, um, yes or no? So I would say yes, if she's meeting people in person. So if she's meeting people in person, then she needs to have a trade license. But if she's doing it virtually, um, then she doesn't really need to have a trade license. She could use even Gumroad and PayPal, and she doesn't actually need to have a trade license. But I mean, like you have to, I mean, be careful because if she does stuff in person on the ground in the UAE, then she would need to set up legally. But if it's all virtual, then it's not really needed as far as I know, right? I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I've seen a lot of businesses that are set up virtually that don't need to have a trade license. Um, and they just use services like Gumroad or like PayPal. And if it's virtual, then it's fine. Okay, uh, let's see if you have any questions here. I'll just go through your questions now. Um, okay, Naveed had a question. If I'm selling from Amazon FBA and I order quantity from a supplier and send it directly to Amazon, is that possible? Yes. So you could do it that way, but it's not really drop shipping in that case. So what he's saying is let's say that he sets up through Amazon FBA and he goes to the supplier in China and orders it and then uh, stores it in Amazon. That's possible, but it's not drop shipping because I have to order it on my own first. Because Amazon FBA, you have to send them some quantity first. I can't just say, okay, I'll ship it to the customer when it comes. I have to actually send them my product and it has to be something that is in the country, right? So if I want to, I, I could order a bunch of stuff um, from China and then send it to Amazon, but it's not really um, drop shipping, right? Um, Okay, what happens if she uses the term coaching? KHDA approval needed? Again, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, if it's remote, then it should be fine. Um, you would only need KHDA if it's something that's happening on the ground, right? Um, what would be the case if someone is selling services to outside of UAE? Yeah, same thing, right? If it's virtual, then uh, it's fine. Um, I mean, it depends, right? I mean, you don't have to set up a company. I mean, if it's outside of the UAE, um, you could set up in the UAE or you could set up through US, UK, um, through Stripe Atlas, or you could just do it through Gumroad or PayPal. And uh, yeah, it will be fine. Okay, I am linked to one of the affiliate marketing agencies. How can e-commerce help me promote the products I am offering? Um, so you're saying, I mean, like the affiliate marketing uh, program, um, I mean, it's basically they take a commission, right? So if they sell a product for 100 dirhams, they might take 20% of that, right? It's just like another marketing channel. And they can help you, definitely. But usually, especially for the UAE, affiliate marketing doesn't really have very high volume. So it's usually not a channel that you can um, rely on for all of your customers. I mean, it might be one marketing channel that you can explore, but it's not one that I actually recommend um, 
as your main channel because it, it doesn't have that high volume. Okay, um, can, okay, Shadi is asking, can I start with a Shopify store then we'll transfer all of my data to my own website? Yes, you can, um, but it would be a manual process. But there's actually ways, um, there are certain um, tools that can basically transfer Shopify onto WordPress. So in the future, if you wanna transfer, that's very possible. Um, okay, um, Navita is saying, uh, will PayPal release my payment if I do not have a trade license? Uh, let's say I am selling in US via Shopify in a payment gateway and only have a PayPal and the PayPal is linked to my local uh, UAE account. So actually, um, it depends, right? Um, so I think it should be fine, but um, if you're selling on Shopify in the US, then you'll probably have a US trade license, right? So then you could set up a company PayPal account with that trade license and, and it should be fine. So, I mean, yeah, if, if that's the case where you're already selling on Shopify, then you have to have a trade license, even if it's not in the UAE. So then, I mean, I could use that same trade license to have my own PayPal account. Um, that's a corporate one. Okay, I was uh, too keen on coming to Dubai to enroll, uh, but due to COVID, all plans have been paused. Not sure how market now. Okay, yeah, fair enough, Zach. Um, I mean, I guess um, if you want, uh, um, you can send me an email. Um, I'll put my email in the chat as well. If anyone has any questions about this uh, session or anything else, uh, feel free to email me. I'll be more than happy to answer you. And um, as I mentioned, if someone wants to see uh, this presentation, um, just make sure that your email is listed in the form that I just put in. And then um, I'll send you a link to the slides that we covered today. And also a video recording as well, if you want that. Okay, uh, there's a question, Asra is saying, I have a free zone trade license. Do I need a separate one for online? No, you do not. If you have a trade license, that's all that you need. You only need one trade license. Uh, any other questions about selling or about uh, setting up your own online store? I'll be more than happy to answer uh, for another five minutes if anyone has any questions. Okay, anyone want to come on the mic uh, for a minute? And ask a question? Okay, uh, let's see. Thank you for bringing. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll answer that question in a second, Iris. Um, just one more thing. Um, so if you wanna have a full experience and we'll actually uh, hold your hand across this whole process and show you how to set it up um, from scratch. Um, so we'll cover everything from how to think about a product, how to do market research, how to write a business plan that actually is profitable, um, how to think about all of your margins, all of your costs, um, how to choose a, uh, a product or service to sell, um, how to actually uh, start your website and like basically take you step by step to, to actually launch it and also um, give you mentorship. So um, actually part of, of this program is um, you also get mentorship from one of the founders of Nemshi.com. His name is Luis Lebos and uh, he uh, agreed to anyone that's coming to our program to basically mentor them one on one. So if you have a e-commerce business, it's a great chance to actually get actual feedback from someone that launched a million dollar, I mean like multi-million dollar e-commerce business in the UAE. Um, and also we'll also help you with one-to-one -one sessions. And I mean, once this whole virus thing calms down, hopefully we'll also um, let you come to Astrolabs for free for one month and help you, you know, with your licensing process. So if you're interested in that, um, you can check out this link below. And um, there's a 20% uh, discount code that you can also use uh, since you came to, to this course. Um, so this course is uh, 4,000 dirhams, but you get 20% uh, off if you use our code. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'm glad that you found it beneficial. Um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, open up the floor if anyone has any questions. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Um, anyone want to come on camera and ask a question or do anyone have uh, a detailed question that I didn't get to answer yet? Um, let me know. 
Okay, there's a question from Babar. Do I need an NOC from an employer? Um, if you're setting up in the UAE, yes, you do. Um, but if it's in the US, UK, through Stripe, Atlas, or some other service, or if you're selling it uh, without a trade license, then you don't need it. Okay, Zach. Uh, Zach, uh, do you want to come on camera? Or at least come on mic? Hello, Zach. Can you hear me? Hi, Zach. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you, yeah. Um, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, Ahmed. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Of course, yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, uh, my, my, my main concern was I had planned to come in the month of April end, but due to this COVID, all my plans got uh, like, you know, uh, paused. I just want to know, like, if I have to enroll in, uh, especially in Astrolab, I was too keen because I've been uh, hearing good things about uh, Astrolab has a good uh, ecosystem around it. So will uh, Astrolab help me up in setting up my, in my website or developing it? Or do yeah, you have some teams where, like, you know, who are very startup friendly? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, Zach. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me just answer your question. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, everything is on hold um, in some way, but also, I mean, we're still taking uh, people and setting up their businesses. So um, through the free zone, they actually are still pushing through licenses. So if you want to actually set up now, it actually is a good time if you have some downtime because it might be processed faster now. Um, so, I mean, it's never a bad time. Uh, if you want, I can take it offline and, and I can share uh, your details um, with someone from our team on the ground here. Yes, and, yes, uh, sure. they, yeah, I mean, they can follow up with you. Um, just send me an email. I shared my email on the chat. I have received your mail, I have taken down, I oh, should mail you. And also, yeah. I, like, if at all we need to, uh, like, you know, process the uh, uh, everything, do we need to travel or something? Because now, now that travel is everything is restricted, so maybe yeah, yeah. you don't actually have to travel, so you can do it actually remotely. Okay, okay, yeah. that's fine. All right, fine. thanks. Thanks, Amit. Then I'll right. connect with you over the mail. Thank you so all much. All right, sounds good. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's a few more questions here. Let's see. Um, how much is Astrolab's fee for Stripe Atlas? Uh, we don't take a fee. <laughs> uh, it's actually, um, yeah, there's no other fee. Um, but if you wanna join it, uh, you have to be part of one, um, one of our programs. So either like you have to come to one of our courses or you have to be a member of our space basically. Um, but there's no other fee that you have to have. Okay, Iris is saying, uh, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, do you wanna come on the mic or ask it in chat? Um, Iris, are you there? Hi, hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes, go for it. Yeah, uh, I was a member of Astrolabs last year and I left Astrolabs in January because I want to scale, yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I have no, no uh, new office, which is very nice as an event management location, but you know, there are no, no events. So I think about uh, going online with these um, seminars and webinars and I don't have a key HDR approval, but I have an activity on my professional service license, which says that I I have an event management activity and I have an activity which is called organizing seminars and workshops. So yeah. would it be uh, legal if I would uh, arrange an online seminar? Yeah, I mean, um, again, uh, this is kind of, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but this is kind yeah. of a great area now. But I think it would be legal because um, if you have a trade license and I mean, like KHDA, they only really uh, get involved from what I've seen if it's a um, I mean, it, um, if it's something happening uh, uh, in person, if it's remote, then it should yeah. be fine. But yeah. I have an activity which says organizing seminars and workshops yeah. from DMCC. I think it should be fine. Yeah, honestly, I, yeah. I think it's fine. I mean, because KHDA also, it's only needed if um, you're actually, I mean, if it's an event, it's not needed. Like KHDA is only for running courses or training yeah. programs. Yeah. Um, if it's an event, then you don't need KHDA approval. It, it, I mean, it's only if you're offering some sort of certification program, then yeah. you have to use KHDA. But I think in your case, if it's just like a seminar or a talk, it's not needed, right? So yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. 
Okay, great. And then I have a second question, if it's allowed to ask. Um, if I were to open a membership platform and I would say, okay, all people who pay a monthly fee get access to these webinars and ebooks and something like that, what kind of license do I need for that? Can I do it with my service license or do I need a trade license? Or do yeah, I need I something so special? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I would, uh, I think it should be fine. Um, like I've seen companies at Astrolabs that started with one service, then they basically, uh, branched out to other ones. I think it's honestly fine to use your current license. I don't think anyone would tell you, uh, anything if you have your own portal and just start charging people. I think it's fine. Um, especially because, um, when you're setting it up, um, like the only thing that you might, um, have some trouble with, but I mean, in your case, it wouldn't really be trouble because you have a trade license is when you're signing up for the payment gateway. So if you're signing up for checkout.com or for pay for it or, or one of those to take credit card payments, then they would need to have your trade license, but they don't usually check what is the type of service on your trade license. So I think it should be fine. Okay, so I don't you. honestly uh, think it should be, I mean, I would like, I think in this case, my recommendation is um, it's better to, I mean, it's better to beg for forgiveness than to seek permission, I guess. So I would okay. just do it. Uh, and I don't think it would be an issue, honestly. Okay, thank you so much. No problem, Iris. Take care. See you. Okay, everyone. Um, there was a question, when is the 20% discount uh, available for it? So the course starts on the 8th of April. So until then, if you want to use the code, uh, go ahead and use it. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you, everyone. I hope you found it beneficial. Uh, again, uh, I posted my email earlier and, uh, and that form link. If you put in your details there, I'll send you a link to the slides today. And uh, yeah, you can uh, answer any questions you have. Yeah, installment plan, yes. So you can actually pay 50% uh, of it now and 50% um, after one month. Yeah. Okay, I will share with you on this link. Sounds good. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a great day and uh, stay safe. Uh, keep on social distancing and uh, hope you all uh, like continue in your um, you know business and success. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.